Your power's a weak old man. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> I haven't done automation in a while, so I'm going to mix a little automation with a little fear porn. This isn't coming from the standard places where I usually get my fear porn. This is actually the Brookings Institute, and it's a lot of what we have been talking about over the last four or five years. That this is coming. And when the Brookings Institute actually talk, start talking about it, it's probably here already. So, here we go. Have robots grounded the flying geese? automation and offshoring in the manufacturing sector. Adidas announced in late 2019 that its speed factories in Osbach in Germany and Atlanta in the U.S., which use computerized knitting, robotic cutting, and 3D printing to produce athletic footwear, will close next year. Having been heralded as evidence of how robots will lead to a wide-scale reshoring of manufacturing to Europe and the U.S., does this reversal mean that these words were all overblown? Tellingly, the other headline in the announcement was that these automated production lines will be moved to China and Vietnam where 90% of Adidas suppliers are currently located. This is not an isolated example. China has installed more industrial robots than any other country and is rapidly automating to address declining wage competitiveness. This is important given that China produces a quarter of all manufacturing globally and the production of labor intensive goods and tasks has typically shifted to countries where with lower labor costs and a pattern that reproduces itself among countries in lower tiers. Akamatsu's flying geese paradigm describes the shifting international division of labor based on dynamic comparative advantage. American European and Japanese firms moved a lot of their production to developing Asia and Latin America, first helping countries like Malaysia and Chile, then others like China and Mexico, and then others like Vietnam and Bangladesh. Hopefully, then we'll move to Africa. Lower wage countries in Asia and Africa are hoping to be next in line. Like I said, hopefully they're moving to Africa. Will robotization slow down the offshoring of production to lower cost locations and ground flying geese in a new paper we move beyond the anecdotes to analyze the impact of robotization in high-income countries on greenfield fdi flows from high-income countries hic's to low and middle income countries like mic's unlike trade flows and other investments which can be sticky and slow to change in response to other factors greenfield fdi data represent announcements and therefore forward-looking Differences in robotization across industries and countries. The intensity of robot use varies widely across manufacturing industries and high income countries. In 2015, the number of robots per 1,000 employees was the highest in the Republic of Korea. It makes sense. Germany and Sweden and the United States and Denmark. Among these, the intensity of robot use increased discernibly between 2004 and 2015 in Korea and the United States, but remain largely unchanged in several European countries. Robotization remains more limited in China. Among industries, robotization is most pronounced and has advanced most rapidly between 2004 and 2015 in electronics, automotive products, rubber and plastics, and metal products. In contrast, the intensity of robot use in textiles, apparel, and leather products remain the most limited. Exploiting these differences in how the intensity of robot use has increased across countries and industries between 2004 and 2015 and accounting for all other changes at the country sector and country year level, we find a 10% increase in the number of robots per 1,000 employees in HICs, high income countries, it is associated with 5.5% increase in the growth of FDI from HICs to LMICs. The results are robust. The positive impact of robotization in HICs on FDI growth from HICs to LMICs is not driven by a single industry. 
B. Accounts for the stock of related ICT capital and a market size of destination countries. And importantly, C. Is robust to the inclusion and exclusion, respectively, of, of China as a source and a destination country. The positive relationship is consistent with the income effect of, of automation outweighing the substitution effect. I say, on the one hand, robotization makes it economically profitable to reshore some labor intensive tasks to advanced economies. On the other hand, it leads to an expansion in the scale of production, which results in greater offshoring to low and middle income countries. <laughs> okay. In other words, what they're saying is at first it will cause a reshoring of companies to uh, of production and eventually it'll follow the same pattern that's always followed it'll go from a high income country to a low income country so basically this is probably only a temporary move early warning signs however the relationship between robotization in hic's and fdi from hic's to lmic's is not a linear one while the linear effect remains positive, continued robotization past the threshold of robots per 1,000 workers has a negative impact on this FDI growth. In other words, you, you basically, you're not going to get any more FDI growth because you're displacing workers. Displacing workers displaces an economy, okay? No more income. This reflects initial signs that scale economies in the use of robots may concentrate production in fewer places. However, only 3% of the samples exceeds the threshold beyond which further automation results in a negative FDI growth and is consistent with reshoring. For another 25% of the sample, the impact of robotization on FDI growth is positive, but at a rate that is declining. So although these are early warning signs, automation in HICs has still resulted in growing FDI from HICs to LMICs for more than two-thirds of the sample under consideration. Robots have therefore not grounded the flying geese, at least not yet. However, for the geese to fly unabated, lower cost locations will likely need to walk the extra mile to remain attractive investment destination. This means relying less on low wages only to be globally competitive, but doing more to meet demanding ecosystem requirements in terms of infrastructure, logistics, and other backbone services regulatory requirements, and so on. Robotization has not yet changed the larger development agenda. I'm going to have to read the paper. Um, I talked about this probably right after Donald Trump got elected in 2017. This would be almost, it will, this would be over, over three years ago about what his plan was. And eventually, I think later on in 2017, what Donald Trump did was um, incentivize incentivize the tax base by paying companies to reshore the production. And the only way to reshore production on these shores is to automate, is to replace people with robots, which is a downside. So you basically, you're going to, to make yourself more cost competitive, you have to make your labor cheaper. The only way to make your labor cheaper is to replace them with the cheapest uh, production elements you can, which is replacing the worker. But eventually, other countries are going to follow suit like China, uh, Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, those kind of places will eventually start ramping up and doing the same thing to remain competitive. And since they already have a lower wage environment, eventually what's going to, what, what probably will happen is the same cycle. It'll come here in advance. It will automate. It will robotize. And then eventually those robots and that kind of technology will move to lower and lower wage groups. So eventually, like like he said, it'll probably wind up in cheaper parts of Asia and probably on the continent of Africa. Africa is probably the final destination for low wage workers. This is nothing new. This is just the cycle of capitalism. It's been done before. Where eventually I'll have to show you the chart. I will do I will show you the chart, the video of the chart. Um, that's actually on my books channel under Quigley, but I'll actually show the chart on my on my patrons page. I won't do it here because I think it'll just clog things up. But this is the cycle for Trump to actually bring a, a production back to the states. He's going to have to automate 
automation will put, start putting people out of work, which is which it already has. It's not even a, a question of when or if it's already started. Okay, look at Amazon, look at a few other places. I'm probably going to do a couple of more videos on this particular subject. But like I said, the geese will fly back. If they're flying back here eventually uh, to, to actually bring in um, production. And once that's done, they're going to follow the money back to where they were before. This is only a temporary stop. Donald Trump can only hold the water back so long. He's got his finger in the dike trying to do this, which, eh, I commend him for trying. In a tech war, I commend him for trying this, which is another thing. <laughs> this is another thing we're going to have to deal with, which is with the, uh, with the slashing of the safety net, because you're going to have to pay for this, which is another video I'll have to do. I'll probably be doing this kind of crap all week. I'm trying to get, I'm going to get away from the uh, SYSBM, Black Gender War, that kind of stuff. Because I don't think anybody's talking about this. Maybe the brain trust has. If they have, I haven't seen it. If if they already have, I apologize for duplicating. Because uh, if, if they've done it already, I don't want to duplicate what they've done because they actually do this on a more consistent basis than I do. But if they haven't, then this is a discussion that we need to have. I want to do, I'm probably going to try to look at the paper and do a markup on the paper sometime this week, I hope. But like I said, I don't know if I'm going to put that here on my Patreon page. And my patrons can chime in and and uh, speak yay or nay. I think it'll probably be on the patrons page because markups are a little bit more dry and detailed. And I don't think um, a dry detailed analysis is probably proper on my public page. It's probably more uh, apropos on my patrons because my patrons are the people who will actually um, view that kind of material and actually sit through it. I don't think most people will sit through it here. Um, if it does become more popular and they say I should put it, make it public, I'll make it public. But um, we'll see. But uh, look out, man. This is the reshoring is a good thing because it's going to bring more revenue into the country. But it, I do believe it's on only temporary. But the downside is, as, as they say, after you get a pass, the the threshold of a thousand robots, uh, I think a ro one robot per thousand people, I think the, that was a threshold. I think it will start to decline income. Well, income and also income growth in high income countries and even medium income countries. It will actually start to cycle back to a lower wage country, which is just the way it is. It's just part of the mechanization. That is mercantilism 101. Well, what happens when the high wage country doesn't have any more money and can't pay for the goods? Then eventually it'll have to equalize out where everybody across the board will be at a certain level. Now, what income level that will be, I have no clue. The equalization of $15 an hour is approximately what they've been shooting for. Whether that threshold will hold, I don't know. You know, it could be everybody will be on the UBI. I think $15 an hour will equal out, equal to be like what? Uh, $2,000 a month is, or thereabouts. I think that's probably where the UBI will land, somewhere between $1,500 a month and $2,000 a month, which is approximately where the $15 an hour level will land. And I think that will be the uh, approximately equivalent worldwide, but that's just my opinion. I don't have anything to back that up, so don't shoot the messenger. But anyway, that's all I got for this one. This is BGS Out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.